The Farah 83 hits way harder and it still has very low recoil. You should give it a try. It's my favourite AR to use right now. The only gun that seems to have less recoil is the built out Farah. Now that the Farah has no recoil too, it is way better. Krig kills too slow. Try the Farah, bro. Hello and welcome to the channel. As you can tell by that phenomenal intro I've made, today's video is all about the Cold War MP5. No, I'm just joking. I'm just buttering your scone. Today's video is about the Farah. Or is it? I've only gone and pulled out a second primary on you boys. We're also using the Cold War MP5. But I have a little piece to say about the Cold War MP5. I honestly believe that the MAC-10 tucks the MP5 into bed at night simply because the MAC-10 is its dad. To keep it simple, I don't think I like the MP5 to be honest. The Farah on the other hand is enough to make you wanna give your meat a good old rub. I think it's safe to say that the Farah has been deemed the bee's knees by a lot of people in the community and I'm inclined to agree as I've only gone and done the impossible feat of breaking my own PR. So what was it before this video I hear you ask? Well, to be honest, I can't really remember. I think it was like 11 or something. All I can say with absolute certainty is that it wasn't as many kills as I got at the end of this game. So you're going to want to stick around to see the end of this video. Wait, was that a shameless plug to make sure you watch the entire video? No, it isn't. I wouldn't do that to you. But yes, it actually was. Please watch the entire video. If you leave, I will cry. I think that this is an appropriate time to address the dragon fruit in the room. That's right, I messed up and once again, we don't have any game audio. However, I actually know why that happens now and I can promise that it will not happen again in the future, unless it does happen again. In which case, I can only apologize in advance, but I'm not a time traveler. I can't go back into the past and be like, Oi mate, double check that setting or your subscribers are going to be ever so slightly annoyed mate. Right, let's get back to the gameplay a little bit. My mate just got shot and he hit me with the classic, I'm down. And all I could think to myself was, you don't say. I need to pull over and give him a cheeky res to get him back on his feet because that is what good teammates do. And I am a good teammate. Sometimes. Now that I've got him back on his feet, I know we need to get the hell out of there before they push us, which led to us driving straight into someone else. It feels like it's one disaster after another, which it's hitting home a little bit because it feels a bit too much like my actual life. That's right, you thought we'd get one video out of me without self-deprecation, but no, I'm not giving you that. With those two out of the way, it's a perfect opportunity to grab a slice of ghost on toast. Because we don't want to be on the radar. We want to be sneaky. We want to be slick. We want to be able to potentially get another kill. Whilst we're talking about things that rarely happen, let's go for another outrageous light goal. I think this video is going to be absolutely game changing to the scene. So I want to strive for 12 yes 12 likes on this video because if we can get 12 likes on this video absolutely nothing will happen but youtube might take a glance at it and be like wait 12 likes mate this guy's content is sick we should promote this everywhere so that he can get a million subscribers i know you might be thinking that sounds like a pipe dream and well, that's because it is, but let's get 12 likes anyway, because sod it. With that inspirational speech out of the way, I have actually got a Warzone pro tip for you. A truck is not only a phenomenal, indestructible vehicle, but you can also park it up and use it as cover. I'm not sure if I'm the first player to ever think of that strategy, but I just wanted to pass it on to you you're welcome. In addition to that, I've got one more tip that almost no one knows. Swapping to your secondary is faster than reloading. 
I'm not going to lie, I think I just hit new levels of sarcasm with that past statement, but that's what you're here for. And if it's not, I'm not sure why else you are. So leave a comment down below. Let me know why you're here. Is it the phenomenal gameplay, the sarcasm, or simply my incredible life advice? As I'm watching this back, I realise I have just abandoned my teammate in the middle of nowhere. I can't imagine that he was happy about that, but I have just secured another kill. So that makes everything okay, right? That makes everything okay, right? I'm still a good teammate, aren't I? Wait, I'm not a bad teammate, am I? I mean, yeah, I probably am to be honest, but we don't have time to dwell on that. We've got more kills to get and a game to try and win because wins on this channel are next to non-existent. I'm about to strategically go from a dead truck to a fresh car all the way to a fresh truck because upgrades people, upgrades. I know you're thinking, wow, this looks like a perfect opportunity to get some money in case your teammate can't come back, but I say no. Have faith in your boys, they will win their gulag. And if they don't win their gulag, well, it's not ideal is it and you're gonna need like four grand to get them back. But we don't think like that. We believe in them like children believe in Santa. And that's right, my boy made it out of the gulag. It's a phenomenal time to be alive. And when he got back and landed on his stuff, he hit me with, what should we do? And I was like, I don't know. What do you want to do? And then he hit me with, want to camp top of airport? And I was like, yeah, why not? Nothing better than pitching a tent with one of your boys. Being the strategy master that I am, and I'm known to be. I was like, mate, you watch that zip line, and I'll go across the airport, and I'll watch. Well, I'll watch the other zip line, and that way we're both kind of just like watching zip lines, and it'll be sick, mate. It was only when I got to the other side of airport that I realized my mate had just tricked me. He only wanted to come up here because he's got a sniper, and he started straying away from his zip line. I was like, oi, get back to your zip line. This is a perfect plan, and you're ruining it. I keep an eye on this zipline like I'm part of the TSA. I'm about to have no enemies and absolutely no, and I mean no, bottles of water under any circumstances coming through my airport. Unfortunately, as I was dealing with the first one, an intruder is now in the airport, but my teammate puts him in his place. We don't have any of that nonsense here. Let's see if the airport intruder has actually brought us anything worthwhile. And the answer is, no, not in the slightest. Now that I feel I've abused airport to its fullest potential, I need to move. And that's when this asthma attack inducing situation unfolds before my eyes. All I can think is I cannot let this happen. This game is going too well. I've got to play it up and regain and support my teammate. And that's exactly what I'm about to do. Or at least it will be what I'm about to do. I need to get up this ladder first and reclaim the high ground, the old faithful, the all powerful, slight elevation on the map. Me and my teammate are looking like an absolute threat to the rest of these players. And if they're not viewing us as a threat, they're at least thinking, damn, they're a minor inconvenience. And that is what we aim to be. I know I'm making a lot of bold statements just while being prone, but I don't really want to get sniped. Not right now. It shouldn't be this hard to locate three people, so I pull out the heartbeat and we've got one. I'm about to laser this guy, or at least I think I am. It may look like I missed shots, but I've tactically decided to leave that enemy till later. I'm gonna deal with it later, not right now. Definitely didn't miss. The panic is setting in a little bit now, because we've had to leave the high ground, which is where I feel at my safest and rotate. You might think I'm feeling nervous, but I don't get nervous but I'm starting to get a bit shaky, you know what I mean? I'm a little bit weak. Now I've explained in depth how I'm feeling about this, it's time to try and pull this together. Another one down, one left. And of course, it's the one that I miss shots on. I mean, tactically waited to kill later. Okay, it looks like he's on a phenomenal head glitch. It can only get worse if he gets the zone. All right, he's got the zone. The situation's getting out of hand dramatically. If me and my mate choke this situation with the numbers advantage, we are going to look like absolute muppets. I'm not sure what to do, and then it dawns on me. I need to use the super secret ninja technique, all flanking, no wanking. I can't believe I forgot such a powerful technique. 
And now I've broke his line of sight and I'm going for the high ground. I can smell the win. I've seen him. I've lasered him down. He's on the floor. I'm not sure why my teammate's dead. But then it pops up. The war zone. Victory. A screen I never thought I would ever see again in my lifetime. A chopper coming to pick me, of all people, back out of Verdansk. A moment of silence is needed for everyone who had to fall for me to climb to the top. And as the scoreboard popped up, my mate said to me, 15 kills, you've got to be happy with that. And as a single tear dripped down my cheek, I said, you know what mate, I think I am. And that is how I broke my PR. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh,